Good morning, everybody. Happy Saturday. Broadcasting live from Mazatlan, Mexico. I'm Bill the Geek, and this is the Bill Dallas Lewis channel. On the Bill Dallas Lewis channel, we make presentations about the joys of living in Mexico and Every Saturday at 10 a.m. Central Time, we go live. We talk about Mexico, how much fun it is, how good the food is, how good the weather is, what it's like to live south of that U.S.-Canadian border. We talk about it every Saturday, and we get all kinds of weirdos that like you that show up and they want to know what is going on. Uh, we got... We got people in the house early this morning when I just hooked up all my computer, all my computer stuff. We have a uh, David Christensen saying, Bill, you're living the life while most people are dreaming about living. And I sometimes I forget how great it is to be here in Mexico. It's about, oh, it's a. Uh, oh, 30 minutes ago, it was 56 degrees. It's going to go up to about. 85 degrees today. Sky is sunny. No hurricanes blowing around. We have good electricity today. Uh, seems like our internet is good. <laughs> and uh, uh, before I before I get busy uh, welcome, welcoming everyone, uh, you guys, uh, you regulars out there, have seen what happens when stuff goes bad. <laughs> You know, like uh, like uh, cameras aren't working. We got a slow feed. Audio's bad. It it took me years to figure out how to connect all of this equipment. I think I think that uh, when the video was going out, this was about three weeks, four weeks ago. The video was going out. The audio was going out. I think it's because my hard wire that comes out of the modem and I plug it into the computer, it was loose. <laughs> And the, thus we thus we had problems. So now I, I know there's certain things. Once I click the live button, uh, certain things I do not touch. Uh, I got that uh, USB cable tightly. It's under my flute, so it can't move. <laughs> we ain't gonna have no. But anything, all is good. We got fast internet today. My flute is on the wire, so it won't move around. And, and I think that we're ready to get busy in the house. We have Dr. John from rainy New Jersey. Always great to see you, uh, Dr. John. He's, he's been showing up since day one. We got Dwayne in the house right here. Ola Dwayne. We got Dave in the house. Good morning to you, Mary Jane. <clears throat> Let's get this party started right on. We I, I got stuff to talk about today. I got like seven pages of stuff to talk about this morning. Char is in the house from Philly. Philly, Philly, that's the first place where I had real Chinese food. I had a good uh, Jewish friend. We were living in Cincinnati, but he, he was from Philly. And we drove from Cincinnati to Philly to his favorite Chinese food joint. And then we went from Philly to New York City. It, that was a good trip. Uh, woo, Cody, what's up? Uh, Bill, why so early today? It's 9 a.m. That's because of the time change. We go, uh, Cody, we go, first of all, welcome. Glad to have you. Good to see you here again. Uh, it's because of the time change. We're still at 10 a.m. Central Time, but because of the nutsos, the crazy people in the United States, they still feel like they need time change, so they have time change, but we don't do. You're in Mexico. I'm in Mexico. We don't do time change, but the nutsos in the United States, they like to mess with the people's brains, so they switch the time on everybody twice a year just uh, for something to do. So that's why. So for me here in Mazatlan, it's 8.05 right now. And the buck stops here is in the house. Ola Liston Henry's in the house. Great, great. Uh, 
And Les, Liston, great to see you in the house. David, my new neighbor in Moralia. Uh, it's another beautiful morning in Moralia. And David, I tell you what, man, I am counting the days. If you're new here, uh, we, we, we share information about the joys of living in Mexico. If you're new here, uh, ask any questions about, hey, uh, would I like Mexico? Where should I live? Uh, uh, You you can ask us about visas. I don't know everything. And uh, the more that you join us live on Saturdays or the more that you watch our videos, you'll see that I don't know everything. But we got people in the house here that between all of us, generally somebody in this group will have an answer to any questions that you may have. We got Coco Mango in the house. Hola to you. Hola, for you people that don't speak Spanish, hola means hello. There's your first Spanish lesson of the day. Hola is hello. Something that a lot of people don't know is that Adios is a greeting as well as a goodbye. So adios is hello and goodbye. So you you can use it uh, when you meet somebody. You can say adios. I rarely do that, but you you can do it though. Uh, Brian Maiden, Brian Pretty Boy Maiden in the house. Uh, I hope the weather is good up there in Canada. I mean, I've met more Canadians in Mazatlan than I have in my entire life. There must be 400 people in this building. Uh, I'm I'm going to say that maybe there are, I, I think that there are maybe, maybe four Americans out of, the, so that's like 396 Canadian people. Canadians are the bomb. Uh, you never know, right? Okay, good morning, Helen. Great to see you here from Wilmington, Delaware. Great to see you, Cody. Can you update an American passport that has expired in Mexico? Also, where would you do this? Cody, I forget where you are, but yes. What what you would do is you just go down, look on the internet, uh, and I, there's some form that you need to fill out. Uh, so get on the internet, find that form, uh, should be easy to do, print it out, fill it out and go see your, uh, United States consulate that is closer, closest to you. I have renewed two passports while in Mexico. Let me think about this. The first time I renewed my passport, I did it in Puerto Vallarta. Puerto Vallarta has a consulate there. Um, Now, I was living in the middle of Puerto Vallarta near a location called Old Town. Uh, The the consulate for Puerto Vallarta is in Nuevo Vallarta, which is actually in another state. Puerto Vallarta is in Jalisco. And Nuevo Vallarta is like 14 miles away, but it's in uh, some other state. I'll think of the name of the state. It's not important. So the consulate was there, but the consulate would come into El Centro of uh, Puerto Vallarta once a week. So I went to the place where they came. I gave them my my, uh, form, and they came back a month later with my passport. The next time I updated my passport, I was living in, where was I living? I was living, I was living in Chapala, which is, uh, it's about 45 minutes from Guadalajara. In Guadalajara, they have a consulate there and they have a thing right next to, uh, right next to, uh, uh, Chapala is another small town called Ahihik, uh, one of the most popular places for, uh, uh, Americans to move to in Mexico. And so the Guadalajara consulate would come to Ahihik once a month. So uh, I, I I figured out what days they came to Ahihik. I took my form to this place called the uh, Lake Chapala Society, filled out my form. And the next month, the people from the consulate in Guadalajara came back with my passport. 
So what you want to do is contact, find out where your local consulate is, go visit them with the form. Most likely they will have the form there. And that's how you do it. It's very easy and it was very inexpensive. If that doesn't, if that didn't answer your question, please let me know. She thinks so. She speaks. Good morning, Bill, and everyone. Looking forward to return to Marida this Thursday, girl. Girl, yeah, I'm trying to figure you out, girl, because you're in Charlotte, I think. Um, so, do you go back and forth? Um, what What's the deal? Are, are you gonna? just live here permanently? Are you always going to go back and forth? Good for you. Not bad. I've heard it's kind of warm. I, uh, Brian, I talked to a lady in Edmonton yesterday. She's from Edmonton. She's a snowbird. She comes down here for six months. She lives in my building. And she said the weather's been warm in Edmonton, like with no snow, which she says causes problems for farmers because they have a lot of people that grow hay, because I guess Edmonton, they have a lot of cows up there and they, they need a lot of hay. But she's, and, and she said the ski industry is just dying. And look who's here, Jamie. Good morning, everyone. I was supposed to be in Mexico City today. Oh no, but I am here in a snowstorm in Quebec. I guess I spoke too soon about the snow. In fact, Jamie, he's been going back and forth. He's going through some uh, uh, like a deadly divorce with his ex-wife. It doesn't sound like it's much fun. And look who's here, none other than Terry Don Marshall. We put up a video uh, with Terry Don on Thursday. It's got about 400 views. It's called Soul Sister Unleashed. And she talks about uh, uh, why African-Americans are leaving the United States it's a jerker. Buckle up. Buckle up. It's a 14-minute interview. But if you watch the whole interview, uh, she has one sentence at the very end. And, you know, she talks about black people uh, and injustice in the United States. But she ends the video by saying that we're all one humanity. We're all the same. We're all here together, moving ahead together. But welcome, Terry Don Marshall. And David, speaking of Canada, I suppose you heard of that Canadian lady that was murdered outside of Quarataro. Ooh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Ooh, no, I, I actually, I haven't heard of that. H hadn't heard about that. Matt Brazelton, good morning, Bill, and everyone, beautiful day. Here in Ahihik, and Ahihik is surely worth a visit. In fact, I talked with Terry Don a couple of days ago, and she's trying to figure out where she's going to make her landing spot. Um, and she was thinking about Mazatlan, and but I think that her Spanish is limited. So I said, I, I and I, I tell everyone, uh, I. I've got a lot to talk about today. I've been thinking about a lot of stuff uh, because people ask me, well, where people ask me all kinds of weird stuff. Like, where should I where, where should I move to in Mexico? I don't know. Uh, what am I going to do when I get there? I don't know. But Ahihik is an excellent landing spot because it's a great it's it's a small town. It's very small. I think that's why prices are so high there. Uh, rentals are high. Uh, uh, if you're going to buy a house in Ahihik, uh, I mean, I, I I know a lady with a fantastic house. It's like a plantation in the middle of the city. It costs like eight hundred thousand dollars, but it is it's the bomb. Uh, but I think Matt that uh, Ahihik is a fabulous landing spot because you can move to Ahi. He can speak like no Spanish and, and they have excellent restaurants. They have a bunch of retirees that are excellent musicians. They play all kinds of music. They play jazz, funk, rock and roll, 
Uh, I've never heard him. Play, I'm not a country fan. I've never heard anybody play country there. But but you can pretty much see live music almost every night. Uh, very safe town. And Ahi he has the best climate of the world. If you're thinking about relocating to Mexico, I think that Ahi Heek is a great choice. Plus, you're 20 minutes away from the Guadalajara International Airport. Uh, 20 minutes. That's that's closer it, to get to the Guadalajara Airport from Guadalajara. Is going to, <laughs> it's going to be like a half an hour to 40 minutes. And, uh, and then... In Ahihik, you're like an hour away from Guadalajara, and you're right in the middle of Mexico. There's, you know, so whatever, but Matt, thanks for showing up. Cody, do you need an attorney to update your passport? No. Uh, updating your passport is probably the easiest legal thing that there is to do uh, when you're down here uh, as an expat. I mean... Uh, all you do is you put in your name, your address, and that's about it. You you take your old passport, you give it to them. That's about it. No, hell no. I'm gonna say flat out, hell no. That's the e that's the easiest thing you're gonna need to do in, in Mexico. Nuevo Bayarta is in Nayarit. Yes, that's where I got my first Mexican driver's license. That's a story in itself. Virginia High Bill checking in from rainy and cold Long Island. Great place to be doing social work. And Virginia is a fellow social work. Yes, I have a master's in social work from the Ohio State University. And Ken Art, Kevin Bacon, I think his name is, is in the house. Hola, Kevin. Great to see you here as always. And Verlaine, I was thinking about you this week. I'm always thinking about emailing you or calling you because uh, you said you were going to come to Mazatlan, but and I said to you, I said, "Oh, I want to go to La Paz," but then I had my Social Security check stopped on me, and uh, that that uh, put a little uh, a little burp in my cash flow. Uh, so, and I really want to go to La Paz, but. Uh, the more I checked it out, and I, it, it, it's expensive. I, I don't think I'm I'm going. Maybe maybe in two years, I, I might not hit La Paz. But Verlaine, great to see you here as always. She thinks so. She speaks. Yes, Bill. I go back and forth for now. When I retire, I will live in Moravia full time. Right on, girl. You got the plan. She got the plan. Matt, is there a gym in Ahihik where you can pay as you go? I'm going to tell, this is something, this is, this is, uh, I have a friend, uh, I'm going to say my best female friend that I've never touched. I've known her for about 40 years. Her name is Pat. She lives in Columbus, Ohio, and she was a warden. We, we went, we met at the Ohio State University School of Social Work, and she went in, she went on to be a warden of a prison in Marion, Ohio. Now she's retired, but we talk about once a month. She's a fa fabulous woman. Uh, and I told her, oh yeah, people down here working out, they're jogging, riding their bicycles, going to the gym. People in Mexico are some of the most health conscious people that you can imagine. Every little town you go to has more than one gym. <laughs> and you can pay as you go, or you can sign up for a membership, but they have gyms all over Mexico. So, Dwayne, you won't have a problem taking care of that. Brian, yes, it was in Canadian news. Unfortunate, never want to hear that, but does happen everywhere, and you're so right, pretty boy Brian Maiden. Now, yeah, Brian, the story was she was traveling late at night and stopped at a convenience store. Sorry about that loss. Uh, hey, man, you, ne you never know. You always got to watch your back. 
And uh, that's that's what's happening. Okay, so if you're new here, we have 53. First of all, if you're new here, first thing you want to do is click that subscribe button. That's that's the phrase that pays is clicking the subscribe button. After you click the subscribe button, then you click the like button. Um, uh, oh, and if you're new here, ask any questions like, why do I like Mexico? I've been here about almost 20 years. I love it. I'm never leaving. Uh, this is my this is my new home. It's it's fabulous. But ask any questions. Oh, on my list here, I want to thank all you guys uh, because you know I I put I'm I'm just me. I I say what I think. It's like she thinks, so she speaks. I'm that's what I should change. I, I should change my name to. He thinks so. He speaks. That should that that's that's what I should rename this show. He's he thinks so. He speaks, and that's what happens here on the Bill Dallas Lewis channel. But I want to thank all of you people that show up every Saturday and my subscribers uh, that allow me to be myself. And I put up a, polit a political video about the election about a month ago. I lost a bunch of subscribers. I didn't lose as many as I thought I would, but I did. Some people, one guy just, uh, so after I put up that video, this 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 one guy, because <laughs> I, 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 came, I came out hard uh, talking about the election in that video. And this one guy just sent me a message that said, goodbye, Bill. <laughs> okay. Adios, adios to you, amigo. Que te vaya bien. But I want to thank all you guys for for just uh, just allowing me to be myself. And if that song was not copyrighted, I would I would put it on Sly and the Family Stone. Uh, for for you young people, you may not have ever heard that. But for if you're my age and uh, uh, the Sly and the Family Stone had a big hit, and it was called Thank You for Letting Me Be Myself Again, which is the bomb. Woo, yes, but but that's the first thing on my list. And now, um, now I have now I have some political news. This is gonna rock your world. Now, the, the first piece of political news is if you didn't know it. Vladimir Putin won the election in Russia. Who would have thought? I would have thought his competitor would have whooped his butt. But no, once again, Vladimir Putin wins the election. And I think he, he won the election like just a, a couple of weeks after he found five or six of his oppo of, of his opponents dead they all they all died right before the election <laughs> but he won i just thought i'd let everybody know that vladimir putin is still the leader of russia and also something that i rarely do is get up in the morning and uh i always check the huffington post see what's going on but I, I, I never, that's not my first click in the morning, but something said, ah, oh, click, do that. And so I clicked the Huffington Post this morning and uh, in, I think it was in Moscow at a music co concert, these guys came in with machine guns and killed like 115 people, which is, that's kind of rare for Russia. I don't know. Uh, but but th those are my news updates. I do have one more news update. It used to be that the United States was listed in the top 20 happiest places to live in the world, according to CNN. The United States was on that list. The United States, CNN, took the United States off of that list. I don't know where they're ranked now. Number one is Finland. Finland is the most happy place to live in the world, according to CNN. Uh, I can't imagine that. I mean, well, I, I have to go there and visit and just see all these happy people. I guess it's like 
living in uh in uh the, that little town in the Wizard of Oz where they're singing and dancing in the land of Oz. It must be like that, you know. Do 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 do. You know, like that. Must 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 be 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 like that. But it's funny. All of the top twenty uh, countries are all European, except for maybe Australia. The only uh, and and it's all white people. All o- only white only countries with mostly white people are in the top twenty. The only only country that is uh, uh, people of color was uh, uh, Costa Rica. So I guess you know uh, Hispanics, Latinos, Asians, uh, uh, black people. They they none of those people live in in happy countries. <laughs> That's kind of funny, isn't it? Uh, oh, I, I really, I and I looked, I was reading the article and I was, I went down to the list of 20 countries. I was sure Mexico would be in the top 20 of the most happiest places, but Mexico wasn't even on the list. What, 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 what up with that? What up? Okay, so now, so that's my news. Uh, this week, uh, this week, what what day was that? Um, oh, Tuesday of this week, uh, I put up a video with the one and only wonderful Meredith Ann Murray. And she's a mystic. She lives in Ahiheek. She's fabulous. She does uh, she does Ahiheek tours. And if you just uh, do a search for Meredith Ann Murray, if you watch the video, it's a, it's a 16 minute video. She does she she, she all uh she's on social security. Uh she has told me exactly how much money she makes a month in social security. We've done three interviews with her. So to supplement her income, uh she helps people do tasks. She 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 uh and then she take she'll take you on a lakeside tour. All day long, Hoko Tepec, Chapala, Ahi. He, she's very upbeat and bubbly. But in this interview, she told us about this small town. About uh, it, it's only like a forty-minute drive from Ahi Heek, and they have these uh, vortex energy places there, where where the energy is 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 a uh, so. And the interview. It gets the last five minutes of the interview are really freaky because the way the way this uh, vortex city was discovered. <laughs> get this, okay? Oh, yeah, yeah. Now get this. The way the city was discovered is this guy was in meditation. Then he started doing astro. He was astro projecting, flying around the world. And he could see the strong energy coming from the city in Ahiheek. So he astro projected down to the city. And uh, and it ended up that the place was owned by some people. And he convinced the people to let come people come visit. So Meredith Ann Murray and, and then people with psychic energies go and visit this place. And Meredith says that that people that are really psychic and sensitive they see they see elves there elves are like little miniature people and they have uh communities of elves with families that live there but we can't see them only really sensitive people can see them that's one tour that she will take you on uh now the thing is if she takes you on a regular tour of the area she won't say anything about spirituality she'll be Super bubbly and informative. She knows where all the stuff is to see, uh, and, and she won't be bring up spirituality unless you ask her about it. But anyway, put up that video this week, and yeah, okay, we did there. There's page two. Oh, and I have a couple of quotes that I picked up this week. Um, yes, I watched the Midas Touch. If you want to know anything about uh, Donald Trump's uh, trials, there are these three lawyers on the Midas Touch, and that's all they do. I mean, they are serious attorneys. They've been attorneys for like 30 years. One, they have their lady, her name is Karen, 
and she she's she's a Manhattan attorney and uh she's a consultant she's the consultant attorney for the TV show Law and Order <laughs> she's a trip oh but anyway this this other guy his name is Popak he has some great uh quotes and I write them down he 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 makes me laugh out loud but one of his co- quotes was uh quote unquote he says he says uh he says, don't piss on my leg and tell me it's raining. <laughs> I thought that was pretty good. And oh, here, here's, here's, here, here's another one of his quotes. You know how people say, well, that's like comparing apples and oranges. Well, he changed apple and oranges all around. He said, well, that's like comparing apples and bowling balls. That's a keeper right there. That's a keeper. That's a keeper right there. So that there, there are my quotes for today. Oh, and speaking of Ms. Sam, oh, let me see. Let me go down here. Yeah, Ms. Sam, you're next on the list. You are next on the list of things for me to talk about. <coughs> Excuse me, everyone. But uh, I think I, I think last week somebody asked a weird oh uh, oh and Ola Miss Sam Ola last week someone asked a question like uh, well what what am I going to do when I get to Mexico and Miss Sam said you're going to do whatever you do now in Mexico wherever you live now and she was so I mean she I mean the answer was so obvious so you're gonna you're gonna move to Mexico and you're gonna be the person that you are right now I mean that I mean that that's it that's it um I I have more to say about that but but let's get uh I'm gonna I'm gonna carry this thought and uh I, I I if if I am I'm going to leave Ms. Sam's name up here because she brought up this whole thing I'm going to go through for a couple of minutes here. Um, I, if you think of yourself as pasta, yeah, pasta or, or raw spaghetti, well, wherever you live is going to be the sauce you add to your flavor. That's, 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 that's what it is. So, um, if if you live in Alabama, then that's 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 uh, that's going to be the kind of flavor that you have. You're going to have the flavor of Alabama. You know, if you live in Texas, you're going to have the flavor of Texas. But if you move to Mexico, Mexico is going to add a different flavor to you. And uh, the one of the joys of living in Mexico is, uh, first of all, everyone is so friendly here. But generally speaking, you're going to see all kinds of new experiences all the time. Just little weird things. Uh, I, I remember driving down here for the first time down the freeway and you have like, like there might be 200 goats on the side of the road. Some guys guiding 200 goats right next to the highway. Or uh, are you going to see insects you've never seen before? Birds you've never seen before? Food you've never seen before? Uh, you're going to see modes of transportation like like you've never seen before. And you're going to say, what is that? What's up with, what's up with that? <laughs> okay, but... But uh, yeah, so if you come down here and you're, you're just going to be yourself, I'm still myself. Uh, but Ms. Sam, thank you for that thought. And in the house, we have Katrina the Maker. Good morning, Katrina. Yeah, Finland, Burr. How can you be happy when it's cold as heck in Finland? I mean, it's too cold to be happy in Finland. Okay, Dwayne Bearfield, political polarization is, is not conductive to happiness. Okay, I, I'm going to give that a thumbs up. Off to Costa Rica next month. 
so stoked. I've heard great things about Costa Rica. Uh, yeah, it's, and it's on the top 20 top places to live, David. Luke, hola, Luke, you're so great. You cheered me up with your humor. That's my job, dude. <laughs> that's that's my that's that's what I do. I got a master's in social work. I'm and I got my notes right here. I got my notes here as far as what what I'm. This, this is the main theme of every week. I ask the universe. Uh, I say, what am I going to say today? How do I spread love today? How do I extend abundance today? How can I have fun while extending joy and love? And uh, that's I keep that that right here in front of me. That is my job. That is my job to share the joys of life, especially the joys of living in Mexico. Ken Art. I would think that low crime El Salvador would make the list. I, I don't know. I don't know, man. Whatever. Whatever. Miss Sam, at least Russia never colonialized black people. Oh, by the way, President Putin doesn't have a history of murdering black people for being black. President Putin didn't invent Jim Crow law. Ooh, ooh. <laughs> and and uh, uh, it's a little known fact also that uh, 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 they say that uh, Putin is like the richest man in the world. <laughs> Putin don't play, man. Yeah, whatever. Uh, I I'm I'm a Midas. Ch yeah, yeah. The Midas. I'm an addict. I watch almost Dave Midas Chuck. A Midas Touch, I watch almost all of their videos. Like, I have things to do. I make sure that I, I script out my Saturday, put up my videos. And once I get my stuff done on my to-do list, then I go to the Midas Touch and I just watch all their videos. It's just like so much better than any news broadcast company on the planet. It's just, the information is fabulous. Richard, has anyone seen this beer in Mexico? I think they sell it at OXO. It's a pink can with a picture of Donald Trump in a mariachi outfit. Oh, I haven't seen that. I'll look for it today. It's a APA beer, and the name of the beer is Amigos Beer. I have, I have not, uh, Richard, I have, I have not looked for it. I have not seen it. I'll be going to OXO uh, after I go to pick up my laundry. Uh, so I'm, I'm going to look for that today. And if I see it, I'll take a picture of it and show everybody next week. And look who is here. Jacqueline Hickson, woohoo! Broadcast, she's broadcasting live from, I believe, Guadalajara. How is your face, girl? And Jacqueline, we were going to do an interview. I'm still looking forward to that. Oh, Jacqueline, uh, Terry Don Marshall wants uh, me to give Terry. Terry Don Marshall's a great person. She knows she, you live in Guadalajara. And she was thinking about maybe uh, visiting or moving to Guadalajara. She, she wants to talk to you on the phone. So uh, please uh, send me a message to let me know if it's okay for me to give you her your email address. I, I don't know if that made sense, but I think you know what I mean. But welcome, and I hope your face is doing much better. And if, if uh, Jacqueline, I told everybody last week, oh, the girl had face surgery. Uh, so if, if your face is, is not, if, if you don't want to be seen on the camera, Jacqueline, you can just put a paper bag over your head. Just cut some holes for your eyes in the paper bag. And, it, and we can just do the interview like that. Or we can just do an audio interview. And I'll just show pictures in the background, but I would still like to set up that interview. And Mary Jane, can you rent 
cars in Mexico. No, Mary Jane, you, you can't rent cars in Mexico. It's illegal. It's illegal to rent cars in Mexico, but I'm only kidding. Yes, you can rent cars in Mexico. It's, they, they can be a little pricey. Um, uh, I just walked by. There, there's a rental car place. It's like two or three blocks from where I live. It's one of the big ones. Uh, it, they have all the United States rental car companies down here. I forget which one this is, but it's only like three blocks away. Last time I checked out, it, it's a little pricey but I haven't rented a car in years. But yes, you can rent a car anywhere in Mexico. And then they even let you drive the car around. You can drive it wherever you want to drive. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Only in Mexico. Uh-oh, I'm, I'm a little I'm a little backed up here. Uh-oh, what did I do? Okay, Dave James, we got that. This come down here. Okay, uh oh, do 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 do. I'm I'm I got lost here. Uh, okay, yes, okay, we did that. Jacqueline, Mary Jane, and look who is in the house. Bien dia, Senor Lewis. We got William Mustache Stoneman in the house. It's always a wonderful thing to see William Mustache Stoneman. He has traveled throughout. Mexico. He should have a YouTube channel himself. And he he has uh 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 he, he has stories to tell. We we interviewed William. Which camera am I looking at? Uh we interviewed William a couple of years ago. Uh but thank you for joining us again. We have 64 people in the house. We have 30 likes. People are even contributing cash Ola to the channel. And that's how I pay my rent. So feel free to do it. Let's see what else is going on. Terry Don Marshall. Bill, brilliant analogy on how each environment adds flavor to your life. It's it's so true. And uh, I, I'm it, it's. Oh, it's just, it's awesome. Uh, living in Mexico is so awesome. And I can't wait to move to Moralia. I can't wait. Uh, I, I'm going to pay rent here for three more months, April, May, and June. And then I'm gone. And then I'm going to save $300 a month on my rent, which means I mean, that's a lot of money in Mexico. Yeah, $300 a month. Jim M. Midas Touch is great. They are awesome. And it's all factual. Everything is factual. Uh, and before I move ahead, uh, Midas Touch, they, they always show clips from Fox News. And Fox News... They have all these female correspondents, and 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 many times they have all the female correspondents, and they'll they'll sit half circle with no table in front of them, and these are like uh, analysts, and they all have on skirts that are high with their dresses up, thigh high, and uh, then they'll have one guy in a suit. I mean, how sexist is that? These are supposed to be intelligent women, but but they have to show some leg to be on Fox News. It doesn't matter how smart you are. If you're going to be an analyst on Fox News, you got to show some leg and some some of this stuff up here. You got to show some of that and some leg. What is that? I don't understand that. I mean, how can you live with yourself? Really? Uh, I'm sorry. I, I had to say it. Okay, now, Helen, Bill, I guess that means if I move to Mexico, I'm going to be a more hot and spice AARP card carrying senior. There you go, girl. Come on down here and get hot and spicy. Come on down. Yeah. 
Yeah, that's that's the joys of living in Mexico, baby, being being hot and spicy. And I, I'm going to say, uh, uh, you know, one of the one of the cool things, uh, one of the cool things about being in Mexico is just everybody kind of sort of leaves you alone. Uh, also, I want to make a video about this uh, because if you don't speak Spanish, then you don't know what anybody's saying. <laughs> You're walking around. People are talking Spanish. You don't know what they're saying. Uh, all the billboards and advertising, they're all in Spanish. You, you don't know what they mean. <laughs> You know, the bus goes by, they have that all advertising all over the side of the bus. You don't know what, what it means, right? <laughs> and and that's for me, that's a good thing. I mean, you're just in a bubble all by yourself. You don't know what anybody's saying. You don't know what anything means. I mean, they they could they could be talking about me. They could be saying, look at that stupid American walking down the street. He got holes in his jeans and those old tennis shoes. Maybe that's what they're saying about me. Any ugly? Look out! Look at how can he even walk? He's so old and ugly looking. They could be saying that about me. I don't know. The billboard could say. The billboard could say, "Send all black people back to Africa today." I don't know. I, well, my Spanish is good enough. I'd be able to know that. <laughs> they got. Uh, they sell these uh, uh, hostesses down here, so they have Twinkies. They got all that stuff going on down here. And you know those brown Twinkies, the brown ones that are like chocolate Twinkies? Well, in Mexico, those are called Negritos. Negritos. Uh, uh, you can just use your imagination. I, I don't know where they got that name, Negritos. And the character that represents Negritos, he, uh, he is on all the rappers. It's this real dark complected guy. Looks like a black guy with this big afro. <laughs> I swear to God, swear to God, all you got to do is come down here to go to OXO and they sell them everywhere. And it's called Negritos. Okay, whatever. I don't know how I got off on that tangent. Jacqueline, can anyone recommend an attorney to help with crimes against non-citizens? Uh, Jacqueline. Okay, do this. Try this, Jacqueline. Um, can go go to go to buildgeek.org. You're in Guadalajara. Okay, you're in Guadalajara. Okay, go to buildgeek.org. Go to FAQs. That's buildgeek.org. Go to FAQs. Okay, let me let me hold on. Hold on a second. Let me just show you this. The beauty of modern technology. Uh, the beauty of going live with my peoples here. Let me let me go ahead and get busy with this. Let me click a button here. Click a button there. There you go. Here we go. Share that. Okay, so I did that. Let me click on this. Let me click that. There we go. Let me hide your message. And here we go. Buildgeek.org. This is what you're going to see. I'm going to click on FAQs. There you go. And then you scroll down here. And look here, Jacqueline. Here's the donate. If you guys want to donate, go to FAQs. You can see support our channel right there. But then if you scroll down, uh, here you go. You're going to find my immigration attorney albaro now he he helped me with three visas he, he's helped hundreds of my subscribers get visas but there it is go to buildgeek.org go to faqs find albaro and he has an office in guadalajara and he speaks fluent uh fluent english uh, so you can, you can set an appointment with him. He does immigration law, but he's Mexican. He's been doing immigration law for like 30, 40 years. And I know all you have to do is go and see him. He probably, or just talk to him on the phone. He must know 
scores of Mexican attorneys as well as the law. So maybe he can help you himself. Okay, now let me continue down here. Let's see what's going on. Uh, James, James has continued in Canada where it's snowing. Jamie, thank you so much for contributing to the channel. No problem. Okay, so I'm going to give uh, Terry Don Marshall your email address. I just talked to her, I think it was yesterday. Oh, and Jacqueline, thank you so much for contributing to the channel. Uh, you guys don't know, man. This is this is how I make my living. I think in another three years, I might be able to pay my rent and maybe rent a car with, with what I do on YouTube. But in the meantime, thank you so much. And who is this? Yeah. Hi, Bill. You put a smile on my face. I just started following you yesterday. I'm from Columbus, Ohio. Go Buckeyes. Go Buckeyes. Uh, uh, I live in Georgia currently. I'm planning to start a start scouting in November. Well, come on down, girl. You're going to start scouting in November. Uh, just remember that when you come to Mexico, the high season, which means the popular time for Mexico is October through April. That's where it can be challenging to find a place to stay. And the prices are higher from October to April. But the weather is great in most places. Buck stops here. What do you got to say? Weird thing about that. When I'm in Mexico, most, fake, most folks say adios when partying. Yes, that's true. I, when I'm in Hawaii, most folks say aloha when greeting. Actually, both of these words mean hello and goodbye. And buck stop here. That's the way the word adios is also. But I rarely see it being used as a greeting. Rarely. Dave James, Cactus, cactus Renicar in Cabo is great. I've, I've got to move some windows around. Something moved around on me. Something moved around on me here. I got to click and make some adjustments here. Okay, that's a good tip. Miss Sam, there are no cars in Mexico. We do know <laughs> there are no cars in Mexico. We do know what a car is. Thank you for that tip, Miss Sam. Uh, oh, oh, Miss Sam, you're in Moralia. So I'm going to be in Moralia. In July, we'll have to hook up. From what I understand, you're in that big four-bedroom, four-bathroom house. We'll have to hook up. Mary Jane, thank you. I'm do I do I do what I can with what I got, Mary Jane. Jacqueline, I tried to rent from Alamo. It was 95 USD per day. Okay. I was thinking that I was looking at rental prices. In Mexico, I, I I don't remember where or or why, but the the prices seem to be jacked up. I mean, it seemed like almost double from what it was in the United States. In the United States, at least it's reasonable. I mean, their prices are jacked up, but in Mexico, I think they're super jacked up. Dwayne, thank you very much for contributing to the channel. Thank you all. We got 63 people in the house, 34 likes. People are contributing to the channel. Thank you so much. Mark, bonjour. Is that Italian? Bonjour. Uh, I'll say it. If you were in Ohio, say bonjour, bonjour. Uh, I, th I thank you for doing this. I can't wait to get down there. Burned out of living in the U.S., yeah, that'll burn you out. Come on down. Come on down. And again, I say, I've said this a lot, but if you are a young person, I've been out here 20 years. And uh, and I was working. I was working when I got here. I'm still working. I mean, you know, this, this is like a hobby, but it it, it I, I have to do YouTube like every day. 
because for me, this is a, I, I want to do, I want to be making YouTube videos until I die. Right. So, you know, uh, but, uh, well, now what, what am I talking about? Uh, um, oh yeah. Uh, I, if, if you're younger than 65, if you're younger than 62, if you're younger than 60, if you're younger than 40 and you can work online, come on down to Mexico and, and, and earn us dollars and live in Mexico where it's warm all year. And everything's like half, half the price that it is in the United States. Come on, I, I'm telling you, young people, come on down. Come by the droves. Okay, enough said. Yeah. Q, why did you choose Moralia over Guanajuato, which was your first choice? Uh, Moralia, uh, uh, Guanajuato. I love Guanajuato. It's fabulous. I could live in Guanajuato in a second, but Guanajuato was a little bit, from my research, Guanajuato uh, was a little bit more expensive than Moralia. Uh, yeah, that's it. Uh, and Moralia is a bigger city. Moralia has almost a million people there. They have eight colleges there. They have a lot of businesses there. But I mean, it, it, it's a it's a coin flip. Also, Guanajuato is a real uh, 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 William Mustache Stone Man. He's been to Guanajuato, and he said Guanajuato is actually like a big bowl, and a, a bowl like if if you have a bowl of soup, a bowl of cereal. Well, look at the bowl, but take the cereal out of it, and then look down into the bowl. And El Centro is at the bottom of the bowl. That's where El Centro is. And El Centro, I'm going to say it's like 15, 20 square blocks of just fantastic stuff. But, uh, and then people live on the side of the bowl. So I, I, I was in an Airbnb and we would walk about five blocks down the side of the bowl into the city and then take transportation to get back up to the Airbnb. So Moralia is, is I'm going to say it's pretty flat. It is, it has its ups and downs, but even if you're going up and down, it's, it, it's, it only gets so up and down. Okay. So, so, uh, Moralia was a bit more inexpensive than Guanajuato. I still love Guanajuato. Maybe after I've been on YouTube for another uh, four years and uh, I have like uh, 30,000 subscribers, maybe I'll move to Guanajuato. Uh, I would love to live in El Centro of Guadalajara at the bottom of the bowl. I could do that, but I think the rent's going to be like thousand, uh, thousand or a thousand five hundred per month. So in four years, maybe I'll do it. There you go. You asked. There's my answer, Cody. Uh, for news, check out Luke Beasley. Okay, I'll check it out. I'll check it out. Mary Jane, thank you, Mary Jane, for contributing to the channel, girl. Thank you so much, Kevin. Hi, Bill. Just joined the webinar, Massive Fire in the Southern Part of the City today. I think it, it's the Tire Plastic Fire. Are you talking in, uh, uh, are you talking about Matzatlan? Because I did notice, oh, okay, okay. Um, I did notice that the sky was very hazy. I mean, uh, uh, it's all blue sky. And I, I got up around five 36 o'clock sun comes up. I'm, I'm out on the deck and it looked awfully hazy. And I thought I could smell something burning. So that's what it is. Thank you, Kevin. It's a tire or plastic fire. Thank you much. Miss Sam, what crimes, what crimes against non-citizens? I don't understand what that means. And I think that, uh, uh, okay. 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 Uh, yeah. I, I, I don't quite understand that myself. Uh, 
Bill, have you been to the new aquarium yet? I've heard it's huge. If so, what did you think of it? I should be going tomorrow. I haven't been to the new aquarium. I've been to the old aquarium two times, and I did a video on it the second time I went. Uh, um, I have a friend of mine named Robert. He has Reina, Reina Del Mar bed and breakfast. He went when, when the new aquarium first opened. And it just opened maybe six, seven months ago. Brand new, it's supposed to be the largest aquarium in Latin America. But when he went, he said half of the exhibits were empty. So, okay, things built. But to my knowledge, half of the exhibits don't have any fish. So I'm going to wait another year and go then. Ray Garcia. I was surprised at Aguas Caliente, so clean and mid-modern. I can tell how nice the city will be by the way the bus central station is. And, Ray, when I get to Morelia, that's going to be like an hour and a half away from Aguas Calientes. I can't wait to visit there, spend a week, and shoot vis video eat food and, and get a good and that's that's going to be the other thing about moving to Moralia. I'm going to be closer to so many fabulous places. I can't wait. Okay, Jacqueline, I don't need a borrow. I need an attorney to help me with a lawsuit. Okay, okay. Jacqueline, that's what I'm saying. Al Con Albaro knows attorneys. I'm I I know you don't need immigration help. But he knows attorneys in Guadalajara. You live in Guadalajara. His office is in Guadalajara. Give him a call. He knows attorney. He knows the law. He knows the courts. Give him a call. And and he he that's who you want to call. You don't want to talk to me. Uh, you know, uh, call he he he'll, he will help you out, Ms. Jane. Okay, and Ken Art. Thank you, dude. Ken Art, thank you, Kevin Bacon, for donating again to the channel. Um, okay, I use Uber the last three times in Cabo. Very convenient. Yes, um, uh, Uber, <laughs> somebody's going to tell me I say that wrong, but Uber, um, I've taken 300 Uber rides throughout Mexico. And now I use DD. Um, Uber ripped me off like the last two times I used them. It's like, uh, it's like I ordered the car, the car never came. And they charged me for it two times. Two times. The last time, this is the second time they did that in like a month. It's like the car never came and they charged me 60 pesos which is $3, and they didn't show up two times. And they charged me for it, and they didn't show up. I don't use Uber anymore. I use DD. And DD, that's D-I-D-I, -D -I, they're half as much as Uber. And all of the Americans and most of the Canadians that I know here in Mazatlan only use DD. They don't use Uber. And I, I, and I emailed uber i said hey look you charged me the guy didn't even come okay uh I, and i'm not using uber again until they respond to my email and give me my uh six dollars back i use dd they're half as much as uber and they always get to my location in like one or two minutes there you go that's what i'm talking about dave james bill it would be fun and informative to watch you take the ferry to la paz uh, you could interview Brighton at almost almost retired in Mexico. And uh, uh, Dave James, I've seen I've seen videos about the ferry. It's an overnight ferry to get to La Paz from Mazatlan. It's going to cost you like a hundred and hundred and twenty dollars for one night, but you get a cabin in there. I don't know, man. It's just a little pricey. I, I you know. I, no, I'm not doing that. That's okay. So 
I'm going to take the ferry over there. There's 120. Take the ferry back. That I mean, that costs almost as much as flying. Then I'm going to get there, spend three or four nights. That's going to cost me like $80 a night or more because it's so expensive in, in La Paz. Uh, I, I don't think that's happening until, until I get like the 30,000 subscribers. So help me make the trip. Subscribe to the channel. Tell all your friends about Bill, the Bill, the Bill Dallas Lewis channel. And when I get the 30,000 subscribers, I'm headed straight to La Paz. Kevin. Yes. Southern Mazatlam. I'm in North. I'm up by the Marina. Dave James. Thank you so much for contributing to the channel. And I just, I, I thank everyone for contributing to the channel. This is how I pay my rent. Thank you so much. David, I'm going to love all the small. Oh, you're oh, you're going to love all the small towns around Moralia. And I think I think David just sent me some pictures yesterday. He says uh, David uh, is an American. He's married to Maria, who is a Mexican, and uh, and and he'll uh, drop me. A, David called me out of the blue on my WhatsApp number we talked for like an hour <laughs> he's funny uh, but he's gonna he's gonna be my new american buddy in mexico him and maria i can't wait uh i can't wait to go oh oh i can't wait to go to some uh, and maria's family uh she has a lot of family in morelia and they they go to gatherings i think it was like a couple of weeks ago it was it was her grandmother's birthday or something like that. And uh, I, I can't wait to go to a uh, family, a uh, Mexican family uh, gathering with all the food and the music and the dancing. Yeah, that's going to be fun. But thank you. And just looking at the map, looking at the map and seeing all the towns around Moralia. I can't wait to get there, dude. Can't wait. Jacqueline, Bill, what? are the sunset and views like where you're going um to in moralia the views david helped me out here the views moralia is a it's it's a beautiful town they have excellent ar ar architecture there a lot of trees it's surrounded by mountains uh beautiful parks uh, the, the surroundings, I'm going to say the surroundings are very rich. No ocean. You're totally inland. Um, and, but I'm going to say the air quality is going to be much better than Guadalajara. Uh, that, that, that's, that's all I can say. But I, when I get there in four months, I'll be shooting Moralia videos like, uh, you know, like crazy. Okay, now let's see what's going on on okay okay so let's get back let's get back to my list of goodies we have 61 people in the house people have clicked the like button 40 times if you've been sitting there and your hands in your lap and your hand ain't got nothing to do uh, consider using your index finger to click the like button and if you're new here click the subscribe button we come out with, a, a, the goal is to come out with two videos a week about the joys of living in Mexico. I see one person click the subscribe button, and I thank you very much. And here's, here's an answer. David says, sunsets are beautiful. <sighs> okay, now, are you doing 9 a.m. or 10 a.m.? I do 10 a m uh let me let me see what camera i'm on every saturday i do 10 a.m central time so jacqueline you are one hour ahead of me right now here in mazatlan it is 909 where you are it is 1009 so uh right now in chicago uh, that Chicago is central time. So, so I do central time. I do Chicago time. 
I do Chicago time all year long. So that throws people off. It throws me off. Um, uh, before the United States went through the time change, uh, before they went through the time change, I was doing this at nine o'clock in the morning, my time. Now I do it at eight o'clock in the morning, my time. So for you, Jacqueline, uh, it used to be that your time, I was doing this at, uh, I get confused. Okay. So for you right now, it's 10 o'clock. It's 10 o'clock right now. So, so whatever. So just, uh, I go 10 a.m. Central time in the United States, United States Central time. That's when I go live every week. So for you, I believe that's going to be 9 a.m. to answer your question. Okay. Now let's keep on cruising here. Um, let's see here. Okay. Here we go. Oh, okay. There you go. There you go. Uh, Bill Williams Stone Man. Bill, be sure you use a pin when ordering your Uber ride. They can't charge you until you enter your pin. I I, I pay cash. I pay cash. So what what happened was, Bill, I paid cash. And then when the next Uber ride comes and they give me a ride, they have the old charge on there. And so then they want you to pay both charges. So that's that's how that went down. Christina, I live in Aguas Calientes, but I'm looking for a smaller city. I'm looking into Durango. Did you consider Durango? Is it safe to drive there from Aguas Calientes? Do you think? I did a video or two on Durango. I was in Durango about uh, what month is this? Oh, I was I was in Durango about a year and a half ago. Shot a video there. Durango is a beautiful place, very inexpensive. Um, I was there in February. It gets chilly there. It snows in Durango. Uh, I was there in February, and it was like 30 degrees in the morning. I mean, I didn't expect that. Every day, it would go up to like 80. But like when I would get up, it would be like 6 o'clock in the morning. It was 30 degrees. I had to put on all of the clothes that I took there. I had to sleep with like three hoodies on, three pairs of sweatpants. I was freezing my buns off. That's the only thing that would draw me back from Durango. But if I rented a place and it had a fireplace, something like that, if I was ready for it, it wouldn't be bad. But very inexpensive, very beautiful. Uh, I do remember that they had, and uh, they had a, a, a McDonald's right on the square. Now, now um, that, that upsets people when I say, oh, well, you went to a city and you said that they had Kentucky Fried Chicken and, and they had McDonald's, they had Burger King. Well, why do you even want to see that stuff? Why, 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 why do you even talk about that? Well, because when I get hungry, I want to eat now. <laughs> now. That's the good thing about the United States. They have, they call it fast food. Almost, uh, almost everywhere you go to get food in Mexico, you got to wait. You got to wait like a half an hour, 40 minutes to get your food. You know, I don't want to wait 40 minutes. I want to go in, give you some money and you give me a cheeseburger in like 30 seconds because I want some food right now. OK, <laughs> but I remember in Durango, they had a McDonald's right on the square. It was a half a block from my uh, hotel. And I would just go to McDonald's and get like four cheeseburgers and eat two because I was hungry. Take a couple back to the hotel. Now, the great thing about McDonald's is their food has so many chemicals in it that you can buy it. And leave it in your hotel room for three or four weeks and still eat it. And it still tastes fresh. 
uh, you know, but it's all those chemicals, all those chemicals work out. <laughs> yes. Okay. Now, <laughs> William Stone, man, we have never had that experience. Yeah, I have two times. And that's why I don't use them anymore. If I go to a town and they don't have DD, then I will use Uber. Lenora Wilson, good oh, good morning to you, you. I wasn't feeling well today. I'll have to catch the replay. That's why we recorded just for you. Yes, that's right. When I'm hungry, I want to eat. And I know what a cheeseburger tastes like. You know, some people like to experiment. And, oh, I'm in Mexico. I'm just going to order something. I've never had it before. I No, uh, I, I don't I don't play that experiment. Oh, I wonder what this is. I think I'll order that. When I go somewhere and I'm hungry, I want to eat something that I can eat. You ever order something in a restaurant and you don't know what it, Oh, I remember I was in Columbus, Ohio and I ordered some steak. I was in German Village. I was in German Village. I ordered some kind of steak because uh, I said, I wonder, I wonder what this steak is. And it was one of those raw, it, it was like raw hamburger. There's a name for it. Some people eat that. It was like raw hamburger. And there's a name for it. It's raw hamburger. How many of you people that eat meat, that eat beef, eat hamburger raw? You know, I don't experiment like that. Okay, so we have 63 people in the house. We have 43 likes. People are contributing to the channel. Thank you so much. Puro Pollo is fantastic. Waited 15-ish minutes for a family meal. Great deal. That's not bad. That is not bad. Dwayne Bearfield. Carne Garibarde in GDL, that's Guadalajara, is supposed to be the world's fastest restaurant. Right on, Dwayne. Brian Madden, <clears throat> Bill. <clears throat> oh, okay. <clears throat> that text I sent you about my friend possibly teaching sign language in Mexico, but I'm not sure if uh, ASL would work in Mexico. I don't know. Yeah, Brian sent, and, and and if anybody has any information about this, please email me. Uh, and let, let me put my email address up here. Do -do -do -do. Here's my email. <clears throat> uh, if Brian emailed me a couple of days ago, three days ago, and he said, I have a friend and uh, they, 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 they use sign language. They're Canadians and they're considering visiting or moving to Mexico, maybe doing this as a business teaching sign language. And, you know, I, I tell you what, I never thought I, I've been here 20 years. I don't remember any, I've never, I've never, I've never met anyone here down here that was uh, hearing impaired. I've never seen anyone using sign language down here. So if you know anything about sign language in Mexico, do people do it? Uh, um, how do you learn it? If you, I don't know anything about it. I, I could look it up on the internet or I, I'm sure somebody made some YouTube videos. But if you know anything about that, Please email me and fill me in. Okay, let's keep on rolling here. David, my neighbor in Moravia, I saw where a lot of fast food places ooh, are in financial trouble. Burger King being one of them. Good. Burger King is expensive. Some of their stuff. Anyway, Mark, raw hamburger is also a French thing. Mas, ya, yami, pas. Okie dokie. Helen, I don't want my meat mooing. <laughs> I don't want my meat mooing on the plate. No. My niece, Valerie, in PV used to teach ASL. That's very interesting. Okay. Helen, I think they call it. Ah, that's it. 
That's it, Helen. Steak tartar. They ought to just call it hamburger. <laughs> That's what they should call it. I know basic. Ah, there you go. I know basic sign language, and my go my God brother is deaf, and I wanted to talk to him, so I learned it from him. Very good. Okay, I is that in Mexico? Okay, now next on my list here, um, I wanted to I wanted to talk about the smell of Mexico, and um, when I first got to San Luis Potosi. There was a, the, the whole town smelled kind of different. It didn't smell bad. It just smelled different. And it took, it took me a while to figure out that it was the smell of people cooking tortillas. You know, because I would get up in the morning. Uh, I was there for nine weeks. I was living with a Mexican family, lear learning more Spanish in Mexico. Mexico. It was an extension of of a Dartmouth college, uh, language program. But in the morning I'm, I would walk to this class and they had classes at this museum in downtown, uh, uh, San Luis Potosi. So we would learn more Spanish and we would learn Mexico ancient history. It was, it was very fascinating, but every day the air smelled like people cooking tortillas and that it's, uh, or, or 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 you would walk by these the bread bakeries or the where they're making fresh tortillas and just the cooking of that that smell of fresh tortillas the 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 fresh bread being baked and so I'm walking to class five days a week and I made a friend I had this little friend this little Mexican girl she was in th third grade. And her school, her elementary school, was on on the way to uh, to where I was going to class. So we started walking together every morning, and we were talking. We're talking all in Spanish, and and over the course of nine weeks, she she became like my little sister. She's in third grade, so I guess she's like eight years old, something like that. So one time, one time, she asked me. She said, uh. Where are you from? And I said, I I'm from Ohio. Oh, she said, really? And she pulled out her learn English book. It was an English book. It was a it was a textbook uh, on learning Spanish for like third graders or something like that. And she it was a hardback. It was a hardbound book, all in Spanish. And she oh, we're walking down the street. She opened up the book after I told her I lived. I was from Ohio, and so she opens up her book, and there in the book, it's a two-page image, full bleed, one image that filled both pages, and it was the Ohio State. Oh, wow. Woo. Wow. Oh, man. Ah. It was the Ohio State University uh, doing Script Ohio. And for those of you that don't know what that means, uh, the Ohio State Marching Band is one of the only bands in the land that has all silver instruments. Instruments They have no woodwinds. It's all brass, but all their brass is silver. Their tu tubas are all silver. And uh, Script Ohio's... Oh wow! Woo! -hoo. Oh man! Um, Script Ohio's when when the band spells Ohio with the whole band, they have a song they play with it, and it's. But anyway, so she shows me up, and then my my dad. We had fifty yard line seats at Ohio State, but so that's that was wild, man. It was like. She knew what Ohio was showing me the Ohio State marching band doing script Ohio. And, and also that tells, uh, that shares a bit. Uh, the, the United States has a huge influence all over the world. Every day, every day, I can walk out here today for 15 minutes. I'm going to see some Mexican that has on a t-shirt that says gap. 
<laughs> or Old Navy on it. Okay. Every country in the world, you can buy Coca-Cola. You're going to see Coca-Cola t-shirts. Uh, uh, people might not like the United States, but they love the, uh, the illusion of the United States. They might not like Americans, but they love the illusions of what the country has to offer. That, that is a quite and experience okay hat we got hat in the house hola memo hola hat great to see you here sorry we're going so early because of the time change but great that you are in the house jacqueline oh okay what is the difference between carne and race carne means meat carne carne means meat so carne could be chicken, pork, beef. Race is beef. That's a, you, you can't have uh, beef chicken. <laughs> you can't have beef uh, pork, okay? Beef is beef. There you go. Ah, oh, sweet Mamo. Oh, love you, baby. Yeah, okay. Now, let's go to page five on the list. And see what's going on. Okay, let's go to page six. Uh, oh, okay. This popped into my mind this week. Um, when I was uh when Barack Obama was elected president, that seems like 20 years ago. I was in Puerto Vallarta. And uh what he was in office for like eight years. Uh, people in Mexico, strangers would just walk up to me all the time. They'd say, we like, we like Obama. We like Obama. I mean, strangers, sometimes people would come up. I mean, people would come up to me with their families in Puerto Vallarta. Mexicans would come up to me with their families, stop me. They would tell me that we like Obama. And then they would want to take a picture of me with their family. <laughs> it was real. People, Mexicans loved Barack Obama. It was really funny. And I remember when uh, when Trump was elected, uh, I was in Guadalajara. And I was walking. I was I was living in a suburb of Guadalajara. And they had this giant park. I'd walk through there five days a week. Uh, early in the morning, around 6.30, 7 o'clock. And, and the day, the morning after the results were out that Trump was elected. Now, when you walk, specifically anywhere you walk, you're going to meet walking friends. And, and you're going to see the same people every morning because they walk at 6.30 in the morning. They're walking. Mexicans walking at 6.30, 7 o'clock. And you say hello to people. Mexicans walking with Mexicans, women walking with women, uh, couples walking with couples, you know. Uh, but but when uh, when uh, uh, when Donald Trump was elected, people in the park that were usually walking were, were stopped and they were just talking to each other and, and they were they were telling each other. What happened to the United States? The United States, they voted for Donald Trump. What's what happened? <laughs> it, it was, and since since then, no one has come up to me and said, oh, I really like Donald Trump. We love that. No one has ever said that. But on the other hand, no Mexican has ever come up to me and said, oh, I love Joe Biden. That has not happened. Oh, just a little tidbit. I thought I would bring that up. Okay, buck stops here. Let's get back to these people talking about stuff. Coca-Cola got more stock indices in Mexico than anywhere else in the world. When I was on vacation in Puerto Juarez, everybody was drinking Coca-Cola. I tell you, man, people love Coca-Cola down here. I don't drink the stuff. I don't drink it. I'm going to tell you why. I don't drink Coca-Cola, and maybe I've told you guys this before, but
but I don't drink Coca-Cola because when I was in second grade, my second grade school teacher, her name was Ms. Duck. That was her name. She looked like she was like 65. I, maybe she was only 25, but I was, I was in second grade. So if she was 25, she looked like she was 65 to me, but, uh, Mrs. Duck. Okay. So we were leaving school one day and she said, okay, before we go, I want to show you this. And she opened a bottle of Coca-Cola and she poured that Coca-Cola in, in a glass. And then she had an egg and she put the egg in the glass of Coca-Cola. And she had all of us watch. And she says, okay, that's it for now. See you guys tomorrow. We all left. And then we all came back the next day. And the first thing Mrs. Duck did on the next day was show us. She pulled out the glass with the egg in it, filled with Coca-Cola and the egg in it. And she, she uh, then she got a spoon and pulled the egg up. And the shell was all soft. The Coca-Cola pretty much dissolved the egg. And, and then she told us, that's what Coca-Cola does to your teeth. <laughs> I haven't had Coca-Cola since. How old was I? Uh, I was seven years old. I Since my, since Miss Ducks showed me that, I haven't had Coca-Cola since. There you go. Hat. I liked him and voted for Obama, too. He was a good bullshitter. In fact, when I saw Obama speaking in the 2024 National uh, Democratic National Convention, I went and told everybody he'd be the first black president. Obama, Obama and Michelle, they were the bomb. Got to say that they were the bomb. Dave James, when Obama was elected, I felt to be a proud America. Me too. Yes. Kevin, I never used DD before. Can you request a larger vehicle if you have several people or lots of luggage? I got on, I got an Uber in Central last year, and it was about the size of a smart car. No room for my bike. Yeah, I haven't figured out how to do that on Uber. When I'm, I'm going to take the bus. I'm going to take the bus from Mazatlan. Uh, to Moralia because I, it's going to be the most easiest way to manage things. It's going to be a 12 hour bus ride. Uh, but I'm going to have four suitcases and that's going to be very expensive if I fly. But, but if I take the bus with my senior citizens discount card, uh, I'm thinking, I'm thinking the whole trip's going to be at about a thousand pesos. That's $50 to Moravia, 12 hours. It's going one bus to Guadalajara, another bus to Moravia. So it's like seven hours to Guadalajara, three and a half hours to Moravia. 12 hours that is, but I can take four suitcases and they don't charge you any extra money for that. So one way, 12-hour bus ride is going to cost me like $25. They're going to charge me like $100 a bag if I fly. That's, that's going to cost me like $700 one way. I don't even know why I'm talking about this. Oh, so why I'm talking about this is that uh, uh, about three or four blocks away from where I live, there is a taxi stand. and um, there's like seven taxis there all the time. And one of these taxis is a van. So what I'm going to do is see which guy drives the van and I'm going to have, I'm, I'm going to get his card so that he can come pick me up when I leave to go to the bus station for my drive to Moralia. And so, so what you do, I mean, how, most of the time, if I'm taking a taxi, I can use a small car, like a smart car. Rarely do I have like 15 people with me. So what you need to do is if you know that 
you need a lot more space, find when you see a taxi that is a van, get the guy's card. And when you need that guy, call him up. <laughs> there you go. That's all I got to say about that. Let's see now. Here we go. Oh, here we go. Uh, okay, what's going on? Oh, here, here we go. Ha! Now I know Obama's an NWO puppet and Trump is a big fat question mark. Not a super fan. Unfortunately, people believe their TVs. Yes. Yes, people do. Cody, do you have to be a citizen to get a citizen discount cord or is it by age? Um, Cody, uh, I think there are two requirements to get the senior citizens discount card. Requirement number one is you have to be 60 years of age or older. Requirement number two is I think you have to have some form of temporary or permanent visa. You don't have to be a citizen. Um, I don't I don't think you can get one with a tourist visa. And the tourist visa is one of those 180 day visas. I, I don't think that's going to work. But if you have a one year, a two year, a three year, a four year or a permanent visa, then you can get the senior citizens discount card, which is super handy. And let me let me try something here. Let me let me click this, and let's go. Let's turn off Cody's message, and let's let's open up this web page again. And if you're on any page, if you're on any page at buildgeek.org, and you just go up here to very helpful info right here on the top you'll see discounts for senior citizens in mexico and you click that uh, save big save big mexico senior citizens discount card and just click the image right there and it will tell you all about how to get that senior citizens discount card oh 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 now one thing that i do remember about the senior citizens discount card. I remember there's a place on the form where you have to put in your CURP number. That's C-U-R-P, CURP. And when you get any form of visa, uh, one year, two year, three year, four years uh, permanent, you get this thing called a CURP number. And you'd never notice it until somebody asks you, what is your CURP? But it, it is automatically on that card. And I remember that uh, when I, uh, oh, oh uh, using, that they, they, they'll want a printout of your CURP. So you can go to any, uh, they call them uh, paper shops, uh, papelerias, papeleria, anywhere. Anywhere where you can get something printed, Office Depot, you're going to run into these, you're going to run into, they call them papelerias. Many times it's just like one room on the side of the street and they sell like paper, birthday hats. You know, it's a little small places. They have a computer in there. Can you pr print out my curb? Sure. Give me your visa. You give me the visa. They type in your curb on a government website and they print out your curb. Okay. Uh, but I remember when I got my senior citizens discount card, I had to have a copy of my CURP printed out to get that wonderful senior citizens discount card. And may I may I digress here just for a second? Here in Mexico, you can go, you can go to the movie theater in Mexico. Last time I went was like two years ago. It cost, uh, what was it, two years ago, it was $4 to go to a movie. And with the senior, oh, no, 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 40 pesos, 40 pesos. That's $2 to go to a movie. And uh, with the senior citizen's discount card, you pay half. When you go to the movie, you automatically get half off. So instead of $2 to go to a movie, it costs one 
dollar and the movies are in English. Whatever. Boy, I'm ranting and raving today. Okay, now Cody, da 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 da, Terry Don Marshall. Here it's not easy getting around in Ahihiqua with Uber. Do they have Didi there? Um, uh, Uber and, uh, is it Brad? Is it Brad that's in Ahihiqua? Uh, yeah, Uber in Ahihiqua sucks. It's terrible. Um, I used Uber. I used Uber a, a few times when I lived in Chapala, which is right next to Ahihik. But here's what here's what you do for taxis in the Ahihik Chapala area because Uber is pretty much non-existent. They will come to get you, but many times they're coming from Guadalajara or they're coming from the Guadalajara. International Airport, which is like 20 minutes away. One time in Chapala, Uber came in about five minutes. One time I waited like an hour and a half. So and unless things have changed drastically in the year and a half since I've been there, Uber and Didi, I doubt if they even have Didi and Ahihik. So here's what you do. When my car was, oh, I'm looking at the wrong camera. When my car was down, um, I would go to the grocery store in Chapal. It's called Soriana. And you go to Soriana, you go to any grocery store in Mexico, they always have taxis waiting out in front because they know people need to ride home with their groceries. So you, you take a taxi home and you get the guy's card. You get the taxi driver's card. So by the, after living in after living in Chapala for three years, I had like twenty taxi guys cards. I'd get I'd get a card from all of them. So what you do is you get a collection of cards, and you get you, you get your one guy that you call all the time. And Jose, I need a ride. Can you come get me now? Yeah, I'll be there. Or or if you know you're going somewhere in advance, hey, Jose, can you come be here at four o'clock? Pick me up tomorrow at four o'clock or. At 5 a.m. in the morning, pick me up then. That's what you do in Chapala, Ahihik. And they're not real expensive, but that's how you deal with that. But it's they're not real expensive. Jacqueline, Bill, do you remember what the peso to the dollar was last summer? It was uh it, it was like 20 last summer. Yeah. Yeah, it was about 20. 20. So it was like 20 pesos were a dollar. Now it's like 16 pesos or a dollar. I checked it this morning. That's on my list also. When I moved in here, I pay 13,700 pesos a month to live in my two bedroom, two bathroom apartment. 13,700 pesos. And when I moved in here a year and a half ago, that was $650 a month. Uh, now with the, the pesos going up, up, up this month, instead of paying $650, I'm going to pay $830 on the 1st of April. Instead of $630, I'm going to pay $830. The peso is screaming. I can't wait to get out of this apartment so I can start paying five. Hundred a month. Yes. There you go. Okay, now. Uh-huh. Okay. We did that. Cody, I just downloaded DD and they said they will be coming to my town soon. Cool. Okay. Matt, we were once in a bar in Romania. And a person found out we were Americans, and he asked if we knew. <laughs> uh, do you know Harley Davidson? That's funny. <laughs> then he bought us crappy local beers all day, but we drank them just to be nice. That, that is the funniest story I have ever heard matt that do you know do you know harley davidson that's funny that is hilarious 
Uh, oh, two years ago, it was 22. Yeah, I mean, oh, yeah, the, the peso is screaming. I hope it stops screaming soon. Wow, that's expensive. Yes, it is. She, I'm out of here, man. And Matsatlan is continuing to get more and more expensive. Let me check my list. We have 64 people in the house, 47 likes. Feel free to click that like button. Feel free uh, to, if you're new here, click the subscribe button. Okay, now let's see. Here we go. Oh, oh, what else is going on down here? Here we go. Guadalajara. Guadalajara Americana is getting very expensive. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm telling you, man, that's why I shopped around. Uh, I, I, you know, I, I go, and that's, that's why I think that Gua, I think that Ahihik may be a bit pricey, but, um, uh, but it's a, it's a great landing spot. Guadalajara, uh, Ahihik is a great landing spot for me. Guadalajara is a little too big and too spread out. I, I don't know. I lived there for four years. I still don't kind of sort of Talake Pake. I would live, I'd love to live in Talake Pake. I did a video about, I'd love to live in Talake Pake, uh, but I, but I know it would be pricey in Talake Pake, but that's why I suggest to people, if you're moving to Mexico, you don't speak Spanish, start out in a place like Ahihik. It's going to be more pricey, uh, but you have a bunch of people like Matt that speak English there and who's traveled around and, oh, go here, try this, go there, try this. Uh, and, and, uh, Ahihik has the best climate in the world and, and Guadalajara, Ahihik, great climates and go get, get a six month lease and then just travel as much as you can. Uh, and then doing what I do, I've traveled around. I found Moralia. And it was uh, very, very reasonably priced, and the weather's great. That's what you do. Get out. Rappi delivers food, yes, in Mer in Merida, more so than Uber Eats. Most folks in the Yucatan use Rappi because it's cheaper, and they have those in uh, Mazatlan. Hat, that's a, that's a bummer to hear. I was thinking Mazatlan would be a great retirement destination at least for half a year. Um, Yeah, uh, but I'm going to say, if, uh, for me, if you live in Mazatlan, I really think you want to live in El Centro or you want to live I'm going to say within four blocks of the Malecon, which, and the Malecon is the longest Malecon in the world. So I'm, they say it's like 17 kilometers. So that's like 12 miles of boardwalk right next to the beach. I think if you live within three or four blocks of the Malecon, uh, which is kind of, near El Centro. That's the way I would want to live in Mazatlan, but it's going to be more pricey. I know some people that live right on the Malecon. They're paying like, uh, they're paying uh, 30,000 pesos a month, which is about $1,800 a month for a two bedroom, two apartment in a very nice apartment right on the Malecon. But I'm not paying $1,800 a month. Once I get up to 30,000 subscribers, yeah, okay, when I get up to 30,000 subscribers, then I'll pay $1,800 a month. So um, now I, I live in the boonies of Mazatlan. In, uh, oh, I live near the marina. Uh, but it's, it depends on how much money. How much money do you have? Uh, but if you if you can afford a thousand a month, if you can afford one thousand five hundred a month, yeah, you can live in El Centro and live really nice. That's that's the way to live in Mazatlan, 
unless you want to find a totally Mexican community. Um, I talked to a woman that is a subscriber. She was here last month and she, she found a four bedroom, three bedroom, three bedroom house in a fully Mexican community for $400 a month. But that's probably 20 minutes, 30 minutes from El Centro. Okay, whatever. Click the like button. Yes, we have. Thank you very much, Jacqueline. We've got 63 people in the house, 51 likes. David, I'm getting it's it's getting expensive because there are too many damn gringos in Mexico. And and that's my friend in Moralia, and that's right. Uh when you, I mean, I mean, there are so many Canadians in Mazatlan, the prices are going up. People are, uh, Canadians are moving out of my building. My next door neighbor, who is a very wealthy, wealthy Mexican woman, she's moving out of the building because the prices are going up. My friend on this side, Pam, uh, she's wealthy. She's moving out of this building. I'm moving out of this building. Why? Because it's getting more and more expensive. That's because a lot of Canadians come to Mazatlan. Uh, Ahi Heek is very expensive. And that's why I'm moving to Moralia. I was there for a week, and I, I didn't see hardly any gringos. Any. That's where I want to live. If you live in a, anywhere in Mexico and there are no gringos or like there's one or two, even Hoco Tepec, which is like 20 minutes away from Ahi Heek, prices are going to be much more affordable. Some people call that cheap. Hat, remember there's still Ixla Huacan. Ha, 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 ha. I can say it. Ha, ha. I said it. Ixla Huacan. Ixla Huacan. Yes. Ixla Huacan. And it's just, it's just like what Hat just said. I had been by there, and I did a video on it. I did a video on it, uh, and when, when you're driving from Guadalajara to Chapala Ahihik, what happens is is you get you, you the, the you hit this mountain, and the mountain, and if you're in a car, a bus, whatever, you're on a bicycle, and the road starts twisting and turning as you go up to the top of this mountain. And once you get to the top of this mountain, then on the top of this mountain, then you see Lake Chapala, the, the actual lake, Lake Chapala, the largest lake in Mexico. It's called Lake Chapala. Uh, oh, okay. Now, right before you start to go up this hill, that's where Ixla Huacan is. I did a video on it. I met a guy there in the video. I talk about a guy there named Bob, <laughs> this little old white guy. He had to be about five foot four. He must've been like 75 years old, really happy guy. And he, he had a brand new apartment in Ixla Huacan, brand new two bedrooms, one bathroom on the second floor. And he was paying $200 a month Two hundred dollars a month. Uh, he was the only American I saw in that small town. They had no cobblestones. The town was totally flat. It, 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 it's a beautiful place, all kinds of fresh fruits and uh, meats and fish, uh, beef and poultry shops, fresh right from the farm, great place, no green ghost, $200 a month, brand new places. Absolutely, near the Malikan, near, near the Mazatlan Malikan, for sure, I'd walk it every day, and it is awesome. The Malikan in Mazatlan is the bomb. And that's why, if you, if you, if you can find a place for eight hundred, a thousand, twelve hundred, one thousand five, if you can afford that, it is awesome. And then you go out walking at nighttime, uh, and and all of the little cafes in the little side streets where you can sit on the streets and dine on the streets, 
while the sun goes down. That is fabulous. Okay, now here we go. Jacqueline, well, I suspect that if Trump wins, so many Americans will run to Mexico. So I guess the prices will triple. They won't, they they might triple in Ahihik, in parts of Guadalajara, in Mazatlan. But if you get if if you if you get if you watch my videos. And go to places like Durango, Moralia. Get out and travel. Watch my videos and see the small towns I go to. And when you watch the video, you don't see any gringos. You go to those places and you're going to be fine. You will always save money. You just stay away from the gringo towns. That's what you do. Now, Terry Don Marshall. It's the greed of the real estate industry. No one moves and begs to pay the highest asking rent. The, the greed of the industry. When people begin to move out, maybe the industry will get it. Okay. Axel Foley. Ola Axel Foley and the gang. Hope all is well with everyone. Axel, great to see you in the house. Woo, okay. Oh. Um uh the the funny thing is uh it, it, now I'm going to talk about when you move somewhere and uh you start to meet people. Let's let's see what Jacqueline is talking about. But didn't you say the weather is too hot? Oh yeah. <laughs> and what about that couple that you interviewed? Are they still there? Yes. Um I interviewed Rudy and Sheila. Rudy and Sheila are still here. In fact, I'm going to see them on Monday because they went to Arizona. Rudy had like a heart problem or something. He had to go to a hospital in Arizona. And they brought their, they brought me back uh, two bottles of Miracle Whip. So I'm going to pick that up Monday, but they're still here. They're still extremely happy. But I must say that last summer in Mazatlan, the temperature was ridiculously hot and humid. And other than if, I mean, it was it was terrible. It was terrible. That's the other thing about Moralia. It Moralia, Chapala, even Guadalajara. Guadalajara does not get humid. Uh, I've I've never. Ex I was there for quite a while. It doesn't get really humid. As long as you stay inside, it might be 95 degrees. But if you're in a cement building, which is every building in Mexico in the daytime, it's going to be cool. But Mazatlan, you're going to pay out the butt for air conditioning in the summertime. So add that to your rent. Kevin, Terry, uh, not the real estate industry's fault. It's the boomers looking to fund their lavish lifestyles into retirement. I'm surrounded by them in New Hampshire. Rents have increased 50% in two years. Dwayne, got to run, Bill. Ha we'll have to listen to the repay. Thanks for sharing. Thanks for donating, Dwayne. Thanks for clicking that. Uh, thanks for clicking the like button and tell your your cousin, Valerie, I said hello. Okay, the list is getting shorter. Um, one of the cool things about now that I'm a full-time pedestrian, just like when I leave here, I walk to get my laundry, walk over to OXO. You know, I walk to the meat market, walk, 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 and you meet all these people. And this week, one of the Canadians... His name is Andre. He's got to be 70, 75 maybe. And he was walking back from the meat market. And, uh, and, and, and so we walked for about five or six blocks together. And I said, where, where are you from? Oh, I'm from Canada. And he's, uh, I think he's from Edmonton. He, he's, he lives on a farm. He comes down here with his wife for six months out of the year. And I say, well, what do you do up there? He says, I hunt. I, he, and he says, I hunt for white-tailed deer. I hunt for elk. And uh, sometimes I'll see a moose. 
He shoots him. He eats him. He says elk meat is the best. Okay. He says moose moose meat is kind of tough and not that good. I mean, you know, so, you know, when you move to a new place and you start to meet different people, you see what they do, you see how they live. Oh, you know, it's just uh, that, that's the joy of just getting around. Jacqueline. Ah, oh, here you go. It's 90 and GDL and haven't sweated yet. That uh, That's Guadalajara. That's, I mean, I never, rem I remember, what, oh, this is March. This is March. Yeah, I lived there. I never, I never sweated in Guadalajara. Maybe if you, if you go out and jog a long way or something like that, you might sweat. But Guadalajara, the weather is great. It's, and they say, ah, he, he is the best climate in the world. Uh, but that's only 45 minutes away from Guadalajara. Guadalajara has a great climate. And when I was in Guadalajara, uh, I lived in a four bedroom, four bathroom house. I was paying $350 a month for rent. $350 a month. Okay, now here we go. Here we go. When, when is your last day in Mazatlan? My last day in Mazatlan, I believe, will be July the 5th. July the 5th. I'm out of here, baby. I'm gone. Kevin, another great episode in the can, Bill. Thanks for your wisdom, Kevin. Thank you very much. And, of course, I went to Dartmouth College, and I think you live in New Hampshire. Wahoo, wah. -hoo -wah. Uh, I love New Hampshire's license plates. N the, the slogan on the New Hampshire license plate is live free or die. <laughs> ha, ha. Did you ever spend much time in Guanajuato? Looks like that's becoming a favorite, cheaper alternative to San Miguel Allende. Yes, Hat, I did a video on Guanajuato. I did a video on Guanajuato and uh, okay. Yeah. We have our Facebook group. Uh, it's called Mexican expats, Bill Dallas Lewis. Uh, I, I put, I reposted that Guanajuato video on that Facebook group about 10 days ago. So if you find, uh, go to Facebook, look for groups, do a search for Mexico, Mexico expats, Bill Dallas Lewis, Join the group, get in there and watch the video. Guanajuato is the total bomb city. I loved it. Great food. They have live entertainment. And I only I was there like for almost a week. Uh I I saw minim, minimal gringos. And when I say when I say minimal gringos, I saw like five or six in a week. It, it, it was awesome. And food. I had uh, I had Thai food there. They have a Thai restaurant there. They have all kinds of food. Woo, it's awesome. Uh, yeah, I, I could live in Guanajuato in a heartbeat. Kevin, elk, elk jerky is the bomb. You never know. Matt, thank you once again for contributing to the channel to uh, help me... Uh, survive this high escalating peso in Mexico. Axel, Bill. Uh-oh, uh-oh. Bill, what is the Day of the Dead celebration like? Is it creepy? I'm returning to Cuarotaro during that time to, remo to, re to, to renew my three visa for three years. Um... Uh, no, it's not creepy. It's a big party. Um, and I've done at least two videos about day of the dead. It's not, it's fun. It's a lot of fun. It's not creepy. They have parades. People get really dressed up. People have their faces made up. I'm looking at the wrong camera. People have their face. It, it is a lot of fun. You know, if, if you like a big party and it's like that all over Mexico. Coco Mango. Thank you, Bill, for all the great info. Have a great week. You too. Coco Mango. 
Name a beach town with cool temps in Mexico that does that exist? I'm going to flat out say no. <laughs> uh, but, but I will say this. If you find a beach town, let's say you find a beach town like uh, Sayulita near Puerto Vallarta or San Pancho, which is near Puerto Vallarta. And if you can find a house or an apartment right on the beach, it's like it can be hot and humid as hell. But I'm going to say most of the time, it's, it feels like it's cool because you always have an ocean breeze coming from the beach. And I rented a beach house in Malake, which is south of Port Vallarta. Uh, and I was in there for a week. And it was hot and humid in the summertime, but in the beach house with that, it was right on the beach. So that breeze. So if you're going to live in a beach town, you got to live on the beach or you're going to sweat your butt off half of the year. And then you have to survive the hurricanes. That's the other side. Brian Maiden, thank you for joining us. See you all next weekend. P Brian, pretty boy Maiden, thank you for joining us. And thanks for clicking that like button and sharing your wisdom with us. I hear Guanajuato, Guanajuato is very hilly. Um, so I'm going to say if you need a wheelchair to get around, you if you have any form of walking challenges, Guanajuato is not the place you want to live. I don't think. I mean, you can get a taxi to many places, but there are some apartments in Guanajuato that you can't even drive to because it, they're all, it's like this, this mess of buildings with these little teeny tiny sidewalks and walkways. You got to walk through all of that. There aren't in the center of town, there are some places you can't even get in a car and go there. So, yeah, Guanajuato is hilly as a mofo. Okay, Bill, how do you plan to move all your stuff to Moravia? I'm taking it on the bus. I'm going to leave here. I, I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to have four suitcases and a computer and my, uh, my desktop computer. I'm going to put all of that on a bus, and that's how I'm moving to Moralia. Uh, one, one, uh, one, one bag will be filled of uh, computer equipment because I've got all this lighting stuff and cameras, microphone, my flute. All of that will go into one bag, and then then it's all just clothing. I'm I'm I'm, I'm uh, clothing. That's all I have. I'm not taking any appliances. The place I'm moving into is fully furnished, and I'm going to, over the next three months, I'm going to get any clothes that I never wear, I'm giving to the church. I might be able to get out of here with three suitcases, two suitcases of clothing, one suitcase of uh, computer equipment and lighting, cameras, stuff like that. I might get out of here with three suitcases, put that stuff on the bus, I'm gone. Adios, amigos. Hat. Ah, okay. We'll look for the Guanajuato video. Thanks for another great Q&A memo. You are very welcome. Axel Foley. Bill, is Moralia hilly or flat or a combination? What is Centro like? I've done two videos on Moralia. Um, let's see. It's. I'm going to say it's mostly flat. Mostly flat. Uh, they they have, from what I experienced, uh, I stayed in a hotel about seven blocks away from El Centro. Walking to El Centro, it was a slight incline walking, but but not much. It's just you. It wasn't even noticeable. And and if you were in El Centro and you look down some of the streets, you can see the streets go down and they come up, but. It, but it's nothing like Guanajuato. 
Uh, I, I think you could even do a wheelchair with a motor on it through most of Moralia. Had the Baja Beach towns like Ensenada and Rosarito don't get too hot at least not on the Pacific side. Not sure about the east side. Yeah, but the only thing, Hat, that I worry about that is the hurricane situation. Uh, uh, we've had, last summer, we had four hurricanes in Matsuma. That's scary. I'm, I'm done with hurricanes. I'm out of here. Uh, I don't care if I ever see the ocean again. I, I don't need to see any ocean again. Okay, let me get Back to my list and see what I missed here. Uh, okay, I think I got everything. Okay, that's about, that's all I got. So you guys, uh, that, that's that's uh, that's that's it. We've been going at it for two hours now, and for you guys that are watching the rebot broadcast, and if you would like to contribute to the channel and you're watching the rebroadcast in the description below there's a link it's a paypal link but if, if you click it you can use paypal visa mastercard or american express or even discovery card to donate to the channel so i can uh, buy new equipment and make more trips and help me move to moralia so that's all that's all we got for today, also, what I didn't bring up is starting Monday, it is Easter week here in Mexico, and they call it uh, Semana de Santa, which means the week of the saint, the week of the saint, and it's crazy all over Mexico, especially in tourist town. Anywhere there's a beach, there's going to be 50 million Mexican families on the beach. You can't even hardly walk. Uh, it's a zoo. I, I don't even think you'll be able to find a hotel room in Mexico. It's crazy. Uh, that, that kicks off Monday of this week. <clears throat> so there you go, folks. Another Saturday. I want to thank everybody for showing up today. I hope I gave somebody some information that that you can use uh to, to help you identify some of the joys of living in mexico uh, so i'm signing off man time to go pick up my laundry buy some cheeseburgers somewhere i'm bill the geek love each and every one of you if you're not a subscriber please click that subscribe button uh, so i'm bill the geek this is the Bill Dallas Lewis channel broadcasting live from Mazatlan, Mexico. Adios, hasta luego, que te vaya bien, and we'll see you next Saturday.